This is a tutorial on cropping and panning, or I could say uh, dynamic cropping and panning. Um, starting a series of uh, video tutorials that are geared towards flippers, specifically, um, you know, maybe people who are into guns and knife videos and reviews, because that's kind of what I specialize in. If you're tuning in and watching this for um, just kind of learning how to pan and crop and, and use that editing feature in, in Sony Vegas, which, which is what I use as a Sony Vegas Platinum, uh, it, it would certainly apply to many different things, not just obviously not just flipping and you know, guns and knives and stuff like that. I'm just saying that's kind of my, under, my, my best understanding and experience with, within video editing. So um, if I speak in that terminology, uh, just just kind of bear with me, but the concepts still apply. Um, I am not a um, I'm not a pro, you know, at, at editing or whatever. Um, I always try to get better at, at what I do, but uh, but bear with me. I'm not, you know, like I said, this is my first tutorial. I'm going to try to make the best of the series. Um, so if I make a mistake or use the wrong terminology, you know, uh, that's uh, that's on me. But hopefully, uh, you guys will find some of this stuff uh, beneficial. So this first tutorial is on how to use the uh, cropping and uh, panning feature in, uh, in Vegas. Now this isn't in Vegas, however I, I do believe any decent editor is going to have a, a panning and cropping feature and uh, it's, it's probably going to function very similar. It's, it may not look exactly the same and the place where the buttons are might maybe be maybe a little different but panning and cropping is a very basic function of video editing it's uh, it's very important so again any decent editor that you use I, I imagine would have this so if you can't apply exactly where the buttons and everything are in your editor at the very least you can understand the importance and uh, the dynamics and functions and benefits of panning and cropping in this video um, so here, what we have here is uh, I just picked out an arbitrary uh, video here that I had from my collection. Uh, this is a first person perspective. Uh, I also picked out a photo here of a knife because I want to show you guys uh, how you use it in video, but I also want to show you guys how to how you might use it in other ways like uh, like in photos. Uh, you pan and crop, uh, a lot of times people think of it in regard to just uh, turning things around as you can see in my screen here I'm, I'm turning this this footage I, I mapped my camera upside down to get it lower uh, to have a, have a lower point of view so I'm you know I'm, I'm turning this upside down to correct it uh, we also think of it in regard to uh, cropping so like you can see my, my glasses here are in the way so you can you can kind of crop down and get rid of that right uh, we also kind of think of it in regard to uh, a, a tracking mechanism where you you'll see a a picture you know and maybe we want to track across it like this you know so the basic uh, the basics of panning and cropping are, are just that you want to kind of get a specific area um, you're trying to show the audience something specific within that footage or you're correcting it or you're zooming in on somewhere that's important or cutting out something that's that's not important. All right, so there's a lot of different ways you can you can use it. And that's where it's important. It's not really just limited to, uh, you know, zooming in or out or cutting stuff out. There's a lot of different ways you can use it. Uh, I'm going to start with just getting into your pan crop area in Sony Vegas. You take any picture or video. So this is a the picture. Here's the video, and you'll see a event pan crop. This uh, little icon will pop up to tell you. It'll say event pan crop, and um, basically what you'll do. I'll just close this to see what show you guys what happens. When you hit this, your pan crop area will uh, will show up. You'll see the, the details. If you look, notice when I click this, it'll give all the specifics over here. Okay, I like to leave this open just kind of get an idea of what's going on in my, my footage. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna reset this real quick so we can just start from a clean slate. So um, real quickly, again, this top button just gives you all the details your width, um, where your center is, your angle. Um, this is if you want to you want to zoom in. Uh, I'm not, you know, I never really use this. Uh, oh, okay. I guess what it does is it just kind of locks in place where you're clicking instead of having this free range. 
actually I never use that. So um, over here, lock aspect ratio. This is kind of important because a lot of times if you have footage that's uh, like this is set as 16:9 uh, aspect ratio, which is widescreen that you see in YouTube. Uh, this is important because if you want to zoom in and out, you want to make sure you don't um, you don't screw that ratio up. Because what what happens is let me turn this off. If I accidentally do this, see I might not notice when I'm doing it. It looks the same by the naked eye that you're keeping the same ratio. But if you go too narrow, uh, or if you go too if you go too narrow here, or if you're a little too short here, you're gonna see black come uh, come from underneath. So that's why you, if you want to make sure you don't make that mistake, you lock your ratio here, and that way you're, you're never gonna you're never gonna do that unless you you know go off screen like this. But as long as you're within your footage, you're always gonna maintain that ratio. Uh, this button here just says size about center. All that does is it, uh, if you have it on, it's just going to shrink in the middle here rather than, you know, going towards one of the corners. Not a big deal, but, you know, um, when I start out, I usually have these two on just to kind of get a general sense of where I want to be. Now, this one here, uh, this will allow you to move the box freely. If you see the left-right arrow, it'll lock it in your left-right position and your up-down position. Uh, again, it's important because sometimes you, you want to have a perfect pan up and down or left right and you don't want it to kind of wiggle too much. So that's why you would do this. And I'm also telling you, telling you guys because I've had this before when I was new to Vegas that um, I did this and I couldn't figure out why it was, why it was moving and, um, or it wasn't moving. And uh, I realized it's because I had it locked. Okay, so that's what that is for. Uh, these details are nice also because if you really want to get specific, you can type in. Uh, specific ang angles, like I, I could type in 180, and then I know I'm going to get an exact 180 degree uh, turn to flip this upside down. Uh, this drop down menu, you can have default, which is how your footage is originally uh, came in, and then you have all these different aspect ratios. I usually use, uh, my, I record in 16.9, so all my footage is usually like this already, but if it's not, you can correct it by going to 16.9. If you do that though, keep in mind that you may lose some footage at the top and bottom. All right. So those are the basic features of um, of cropping uh, within your within your toolbar. Uh, now I'm going to kind of get into some advanced, uh, semi-advanced techniques. It's not really even advanced techniques; just ideas for you guys to play around with uh, when you're when you're um, using your pan crop. Some some ways you can make your footage a little bit more dynamic. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, panning and cropping is not just for cutting stuff out and, uh, you know, adjusting your your footage, but it can also be used in a lot of fun ways to add a little bit more, you can add motion, right, to your still image. So one thing that if you watch my videos and you see that there's a lot of, um, you know, I do a lot of stuff in my photos where I zoom in, I pan across and kind of give it some motion, uh, I'll show you kind of how I do that. Um, a very important line here is your keyframes. Okay, this bottom line here is is very important because this is going to tell the software uh, what when you want to uh, do a certain pan and crop. This is going to be the same for all your effects as well. But basically, uh, this is how you control the motion within your pan and crop. I think a lot of times people, if you're new to editing, you kind of think of uh, panning and cropping as kind of a one-time event. So let's just say you have a picture and you're just like, oh, you know, I just want to see these. Uh, this part of the picture here and then you just leave it like that. Well, the great thing about video is, you know, and, and this pan and crop feature is you don't, it's not just a one-time thing, but it's rather a dynamic tool. So I can go from here, right? I can say, I can say, I want the audience to see this clip for, um, for a little bit, like, uh, you know, for a few seconds here. And then I want it to shift over to this tool, you know, and then I want them to watch it for a little bit there. And then I want it to shift to the to the knife. Okay, so let's see what that looks like when I hit play. It's gonna go. Uh, well, I, you know what, guys? I should I probably should have shortened this a little bit. There we go. I actually meant to, to make that a little bit quicker. I mean, I don't want to bore you guys too much. But you can see that. Um, you can see how this how this uh, moved. Okay, you know what? Let's let's do it one more time so you guys can get a better idea of. How it looks on a quicker time frame. Let's do it now. All right. Uh, so okay. So as you can see, that is a very quick example of how to animate your pan and crop.
to give your uh, your your picture a lot of movement. Now I'm just going to add a lot of. If you notice, every time I, I, I add a point here, I move this, you, you see a new diamond form, right? These are keyframes. Basically, each of these little diamonds hold a position. And as they transition from diamond to diamond, uh, it, the, it, from one little keyframe to the next, uh, in between, it'll go from one position and work it to the next. So now let's take a look at what how our footage uh, looks now. You can see it's going, you know, basically covering all the spots that I I put in there, right? So this is a, a very important feature. Keyframing is a fundamental aspect of editing. Uh, they basically um, allow you to animate and add a kind of a dynamic uh, range, uh, and you're telling your you're telling the editor, you know, when to do things, and you can control, you know, the pace at which it's done. Now this is for a still image, you know, so you can see how much how much uh, action we just put into a, a still image. Maybe a more practical way that we would uh, we would actually use this feature is let's say um, you have a still image and okay so a, a cool way to do this would be you start out the footage here and then you want to just have it um, you know go across a knife like that. That's like a more realistic way of how you would use that. Now in video, um, let's click this in, bring up this footage, right? Uh, I'm using my scroll button, by the way, to zoom in and out. I think you could use uh, use this feature as well. Um, well, this is only zoom in. Anyways, uh, use your, your mouse wheel to zoom in and out here. And when you're on this timeline, you can do the same if you want to get more detailed. Uh, let me show you one kind of a cool way to use your keyframes in uh, in video. Um, I know a fellow flipper, uh, Wiggums, was asking how I did a kind of a 360 rotation in my in my flipping uh, in one of my flipping videos. So the way I do that is basically you start off at your default, and then you move to the the time frame where you want to complete the uh, 360. Maybe we should do some flipping footage. Let's, uh, let's do this. All right. So I'll start here. Angle is zero. I'll move it to here, and then I just type in 360. So now it's going to go from my standard position, and as you as you can see, as it works to make a full 360, this thing, uh, my frame is moving here, and once it gets here, it completes the the circle. Um, that's how you. That's basically how you. How you do it, and depending on how much time you put in between, will change the effect. You know, if you want to slow it down, you need to put in a little bit more time between the between the, the keyframes. Um, another way to use this in flipping is if you have, uh, let's say, you're doing a tutorial of some sort. You know, maybe you want to. Maybe you want to zoom in on a particular part of that tutorial. So as, as this is going, maybe you want to highlight in on this chaplain. So what you'll do is, at this point, you just you can zoom in on the knife to get a clearer view. This is not the best footage. You know, you can follow it. See, in, in here, you can see my hand here. I can just follow it and then make sure it's always in frame. You don't want to do this too much. It's kind of get nauseating if you if you actually edit like this, but just to give you guys an idea of what what can be done. Um, so those are those are some ways to actually make your video uh, dynamic and um, use panning and cropping in, in creative ways and practical ways. Uh, I hope it kind of gives you guys enough insight to use it, uh, you know, in your editing. It kind of gives you guys a better understanding of what it does and how to use it appropriately. Um, I just want to. Uh, before I let you guys go, uh, I just want to hit the highlight this little sync cursor button. I had an issue with uh, Vegas when this wasn't clicked. So what's going to happen is if that's not clicked, you can go through your footage and it's going to, you can see what's going on here, but it's not going to happen on your main preview. So uh, like if I do this, it's I can see what's going on, but I can't see where it's going, where it's happening. So just make sure this is clicked. That way these are both synced. It's going to make a 
big difference and makes your editing um, a lot easier okay so just remember this so hope I didn't bore you guys too much you know I, I'm not used to um, tutorials on editing um, hopefully they'll get better as I get along but I don't want to just cover exactly how to do stuff I mean obviously that's part of the tutorial but I also want to cover uh, the practical applications, the creative applications of of how to use these tools. So, you know, if it co comes off a little bit dry, I apologize, but I but I kind of want to um, show you guys that aspect as well because you know most tutorials you see they're just like step one, step two, step three, but uh, I don't think that opens up enough doors as to how to use this stuff creatively. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them leave them below. And uh, thanks for watching. Oh, my God.